Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Growing Pilots YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about a how-to video on how to split your nose bowl. It's a very useful mod. The FTC paperwork is available from Fletch Air, and the hardware kit is available from the GPA. It's on our website. So we hope you found all this useful and informative. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilots YouTube channel, directly supporting the Grumman Pilots Association. And this morning, we're going to walk through a fairly long video, but this is an illustrated version of how to split a nose bowl. So before we even begin to start, the first thing we do is we go get some blue painter's tape, and we go on the bottom of the cut line of the upper and the lower cowling, and then we extend it around the front, and then wrap it around onto the inside. And then we do the same thing on the other side. We take the blue painter's tape, we follow that line already in your cowling, coming around the front and tuck it inside the inlet. Now that we know where the cut line is, which is going to be on the top of this, on the top of this piece of tape on both sides, now we can mark it onto here with a straight edge. And that way what you do is when you cut the upper nose bowl, you get a nice line that flows with the airplane. I've seen them cut here and cut up here and it really catches your eye but when you follow the existing line in the cowling you really don't see it after you split the nose bowl. So the next step is is we're going to be taking off the spinner and the propeller and then removing the nose bowl from the aircraft. So stand by for a bit more fun. Okay now that we've marked the sides and we've removed the spinner and the propeller and the spinner plate now we're ready to finish marking a piece we can get across without the propeller in the way. So we take blue painter's tape uh, 3M, this will make Stan Berger very happy, retired 3M engineer. And we line that tape up. Then we kind of have to kind of eyeball it. Or what we want is a nice straight line. And now we have that nice straight line. We can seal the tape off. And this way we know where on the upper edge where to mark here. So we're going to get a pencil. We're going to put a line. And then when we remove the nose bolt, we'll take a square and drop the square down to the floor when this is sitting on the floor with this facing up so that we can get a nice straight line through the cowling on all the pieces. So stand by while I get a pencil. Okay, so having retrieved the cron dash, we go ahead and we mark the cowling. And remembering that we want our line to be on the top side of the tape you can put it the other way, it doesn't matter, my personal preference is the mark above the tape. And so now we have a mark, we already have the tape here, so now we've done all the marking that we need to do. Now we're going to leave the tape in place uh, while we remove this, but now it's a simple matter of removing all the screws in the nose bolt, taking the two out, of the, the four out of here, two on either side, and then disconnecting the landing light. Hopefully they have a quick disconnect, if not we'll take it off the post, and then we'll have the nose bolt off the airplane. So stand by while we do that. Okay, now that we've gotten all the screws out, we've taken a gasket cutter and or a small knife, anything sharp, and we've cut the tape on both sides. We've removed the upper cowling, the four screws here. We've removed there. That way, this way, when we take this out, we can pick it up and try to get the landing light loose all in one fell swoop. And as luck would have it, there is no disconnect. So, not a problem. We take our little screwdriver and we'll just remove the landing light wire from the back of the landing light. Okay, now the nose bolt is off. This is an LED landing light, so we'll need when we put it back together to observe polarity. And this is a very particularly clean nose bolt. A couple things we noticed, though, is that there is an oil leak up in the front um, somewhere. We'll have to look at it. It looks like it's the cylinder number two. We're just here to do the split nose bowl, but we'll make a list of notation. Also, the baffle seal on this aircraft is um, at the end of its service life, and uh, we noticed a couple of cracks in the baffling and a couple of places where air is leaking. So we'll write some notes and let the customer know we can address all these on annual. But now that we have the tape and all in the nose bowl, we're now ready to go to the table and start our real work. So stand by. Okay, so we actually have the paperwork. Um, now what it comes with, it comes with a diagram and we're going to embed this diagram in the video as a JPEG but it just shows you the basic of what we're going to be doing, splitting the nose bowl which we've already marked 
also called out in here are all the pieces of metal that you need. They're two inches tall and they have some distinctive lengths. And what we've done is, is we've gone over this morning to the metal shear and since we have a couple of the people wanting kits, um, Rags out in Chandler, Arizona has to do a split nose bowl in his shop and so we're going to cut all the metal and send all the fasteners. Uh, seven and three quarters, seven and a quarter, six and a half and five and three quarters and they all call out where they go the left outer right outer left center right center uh, but it's all called out in the diagram the paperwork comes from Fletch Air it's an STC kit it comes with six pages a parts list which is by the way not complete uh, as well as the diagrams for how to cut the metal Fletcher used to provide this as a complete kit you got the paperwork STC with your serial number and all on it as well as all the parts in a bag including all the metal they don't do that anymore so we've talked it over with the steering committee for the GPA and we're going to start making these complete installation kits to complement you'll get the paperwork from Fletch Air but the hardware the fasteners the screws the Tenerman washers everything you need to do the job will come from the GPA we'll put it together as a kit and we'll just mail it to you in a small flat rate uh, postage box so now what we're going to do is now that we have all the metal cut aside we're going to lay aside one piece of each of these for this project we're going to take the other ones we did for the other people we're going to move them aside and now we're going to begin marking the metal with the lines where the holes for candidate drilling are going to be we won't line those up until we actually have them on the airplane and we get them bent to go into the nose bowl. By the way, while we're on the subject of paperwork, before we go, um, on the GPA website, in the forums, if nose bowl split STC SA 4325NM illustrated instructions, it prints out to 18 pages. It prints out to like 18 pages, and it's illustrated. Um, so if you want to read about the step-by-steps, just go to the forums and, um, and do a search. This one's actually in... Under Home, Forums, Technical Information. Under Technical Information, we have all the stuff, uh, including the comments. Let me just talk about the tools real quick. You're going to need blue painter's tape, as you've already saw. That's for marking. You're going to need a pencil or a carandash. You're going to need a straight edge ruler, a sharpie, such as this, a number 40, a 1 8 and a 13 32 drill bit. You'll need a flush cut saw. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver a rivet squeezer, Clico pliers, some Clicos, 1 8 inch, those are the copper ones, 10 or so should do, a drill, some clamps, the number 40 skin rivets for the nut plates, some 3 quarter inch countersunk rivets to attach the outside, sandpaper, paint, file, and a few skills and sheet metal riveting and Clico use for the different parts. And we're going to take our Sharpie and we're going to draw the lines that are on here the parallel lines and then we'll lay it all out and start the process of match drilling into the um, into the uh, nose bowl itself and we'll show you a few tricks of all that in just a few minutes so stand by so before we finish up on tools real quickly uh, when I talk of clamps these are just urban woodworking clamps and we're going to be using those to hold things in place and to pull things in place and then here's a quick tool you just take a section of two by four and you make a bull nose on it and this is going to help us on the nose bowl. So when you, when you go to bend the metal to go in this part of the nose bowl, it's kind of a tight fit. You know, it's okay here. These are straight pieces of metal. They don't have any bend here in the center, sorry, in the center section. The center sections, the metal just lays in. They're not a problem at all. But it's in these outer sections on either side where this is designed to go in here and allow the clamp to grab it on the top and on the nose bowl and pushes that piece of metal way down into that curved surface so you get a good good anchor point when you go to do your drilling and everything on the um, on the metal so it gets it deeply seated in there it just makes it easier to take your nose bowl apart when you do it and we do that on both sides so it's not hard to make just a piece of two by four a couple of wax with a saw, a little bit of sanding on a belt sander, and there you go, a bull nose piece of 2x4. Comes in really handy. Okay, we've come back on the metal. We've marked them left outer, right outer, left center, and right center. That's 
on the aircraft. So on this airplane, the left will be the pilot side, the right will be the co-pilot side. But the other couple of tools, Clico pliers, come in very handy. And I said eighth inch Clicos, I meant actually number 40 Clicos. So we'll be using these to hold the, uh, the two-legged captures. These are uh, MS21047L8 blind captures. They're held in by two number 40 skin rivets. And they get, well, they get riveted on here in the plates and various things. These are your blind captures up on the top. You also have a rivet squeezer. And then the most important thing you can do is get a hacksaw blade or you can go out to uh, any of the craft stores or um, Harbor Freight. And this is an 8-inch Japanese flush cut saw. It's a very thin 132nd inch blade and it cuts when you pull. comes in very handy. The other trick is, as you'll see when we'll, um, we're actually cutting the fiberglass, is after you get cutting a couple inches, the fiberglass wants to close in together. Um, take a piece of 132nd stock or something a little bit bigger and put it in the cut. That way it won't bind the saw as you're cutting down. But we'll cover more on that later. Finally, when we go to use the uh, blind rivets, we're going to be countersinking them in. So we have a countersinking tool. If you don't have one of these expensive tools, you can get by with one of the small aircraft countersinks. You just have to make sure you don't countersink too far. So you'll be using this um, on the sheet metal, and then we'll be using a drill bit to countersink into the fiberglass for the uh, Tenorman washers. Stand by while we call out all the hardware. So our main hardware for assembling the upper and lower noble, as you've seen, we use number eight hardware with a Tenorman washer. This goes on the outside of the aircraft, goes through the fiberglass and into the uh, two-legged anchor that will be affixed to the, uh, the aluminum pieces that we're producing. Uh, really not much to these. The bottom row, uh, when we send out the kit, since most people don't have access to a rivet squeezer, and it's really hard to squeeze the bigger rivets that are called out, then what we do is we actually send the MS, uh, I'm sorry, the AN365-1032A nylon lock nuts and these go on the back side of the aluminum. So the bottom row of screws, we normally paint white to match or blue to match the nose bowl, whatever color the nose bowl is. So you know not to take these off. And we leave the ones you take off in just stainless steel. But it's your preference. This way it's a lot easier for most people to work with hardware than it is with a rivet squeezer in tight places. Okay, so we've drawn our parallel lines. And we've marked all the holes to drill on all the pieces. We've also taken our blue tape and transferred our cut lines with pencil onto the fiberglass all the way around, including, don't forget to do the tops as well on the rim around the, where the spinner, the spinner hole is, down the sides. And that's where we're going to be cutting. Now, cutting is the last step we do. Before that, we will match drill everything into place. That way, we don't change any of the dimensions of the uh, nose bowl. When, if you cut it and then you do it, you lose the 132nd. So we want to have that 132nd gap in there. And that's what we're going to be using while we do the match drilling. So stand by for the next step. Now, here's a couple of tricks to a nice installation. Let me remove the uh, center piece so you can see. Your air intakes are reinforced with this doubler right here. And it actually comes around and bolts to the, and um, rivets to the fiberglass. We like to take our plates and run them right up against that. It gives a nice stable place to clamp it. However, when we do that, we'll see that we want our cut line to be about right where my finger is. But if we come to the other side, we can see that we're off about a half an inch. So we're going to move this, this one over here a half inch down. Same thing over here. We've got this big uh, Irwin clamp holding this right up against the aluminum so that it, it will give a nice stable place for the aluminum can't wobble. But if we come to the other side, we see that our cut line is not what we're going to move it down roughly about an inch. So we're going to move this one down a bit. So they're not going to be perfectly symmetrical, but it's in the center section that nobody will notice. And it gives for a much a much more stable installation. We want our cut line to be about right here. So we're going to be transferring that line. Uh, let's we'll make that transfer and then we'll clamp these back into place and we'll do our match drilling in just a moment. Okay, you can just see the remnants of our old line on the left hand side, pilot side. We moved it. The front was fine, but we moved the back because we want to make sure that our cut line comes about through the center of the uh, metal piece. And over here, we had to move the entire line 
down a half inch. You can see the two parallel lines. We will remove this line right here in a moment. But we have it in place and now we're going to get our drill and we're going to start drilling our holes through the aluminum and through the um, fiberglass and as we do each one we'll be adding a clico from the outside to the inside to hold it so we can remove the clamp and get to the top hole. So, Okay, so the, a couple of tips. Take your time. Get a sharp drill. Neatness counts. So as we're drilling through the inside of the aluminum, once we hit the fiberglass, we want to let the bit do the work because we don't want to do a whole lot of cracking in the gel coat that's on the, on the uh, fiberglass. Some is okay because it's going to be covered by a, a tenement washer. So you've got quite a large area that you could make a boo-boo on and still cover it. So we take the drill, set it on fast, and now we're going to drill our first hole. We always do the... Now when we drew those cut lines, we really should call them a candidate cut, cut lines because, let me move the drill out of the way, but once we now have the Clico in place, let me make sure I'm in the viewfinder on this, let me turn this so we're a little bit more parallel, now we can examine this line and that line goes pretty much straight through where the Clicos are, so that's a good cut line and we're going to leave that one right where it is. Now we're going to start in on the longer side we have a few more holes to drill but it's the same basic principle we're butted up against this aluminum uh, we'll go ahead and drill this one and probably this one and then we'll come up here and get the diagonals and then after that it's all pretty much downhill from there Just, we're going to move the bottom just a little bit forward uh, to go right through the, right through the fasteners. Um, that's just one detail. Now, now for the fun ones. Uh, these uh, angle brackets, and that's where that block of wood comes in place because these need to go in and be held again. Let me make sure I'm in the viewfinder, which I'm not. Let's turn it so I can get some more light in there. And again, like on the inside, you have this little piece, and what we want is we want this to line up bent in there. So what we normally do is we take a look at this distance here, our bend to be somewhere right up in here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the block of wood, and we're going to use it to form our bend. We want to bend it straight, just like that. So now we have our bend, and this is going to go in here. Let's reposition the camera again once more into the well. Let's get it at an angle so you can actually see what's going on. And now we want to slip this in. We actually bent it the wrong way. Let me bend it the other way. I can't see my, my registration marks. Okay, now they're on the inside where I want them. And now we can push this into the airplane and try to get it to that bracket. Now in this particular case we've got a reinforcement rib in there which is going to mess us up a little bit. Okay so basically what we did was we took the block of wood you'll notice the block of wood is not quite symmetric because that's not a symmetric gouge or gorge in there and we used that by taking the clamp and basically doing it this way on the fiberglass and on the block to drive that aluminum all the way down into the gorge. That way it's really nice and well seated. Now you might notice that there's a conundrum here because we can't obviously get this drill in here to drill these holes so we're going to be drilling from the other side and we're going to do that with a match driller. We're going to go get it 
a hole match or a hole finder, some people call it. And that way we're going to drill. And then while we do that, we, I can see right here that this, this line right here on this side is going to get moved a little bit to get it in between the center of the clecos. Again, neatness counts. We want these lines on the outside to match the cowling. These will get adjusted as the metal lays in the air, airplane. And now the two hard ones are done on this side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drill the ones on the outside. Again, we'll be using the hole finder uh, to get us started. That worked out fairly well. I've got the Clecos in place. Uh, we've got the holes drilled on the outside. Um, just as an FYI, uh, most shops quote 12 hours to do this work. Um, that's a good round number. That's especially if you're doing it the first time. The first one we did way back in 91, two of us, uh, we spent two guys 12 hours doing it. It was a full day's worth of work. But we've gotten better at it uh, now that we know all the tricks. That's why we're passing them on to you. So again, most shops put quote 12 hours. We can normally do this in 9 to 10 hours, depending upon which particular airplane model it is. The two places are nice and easy. So anyway, we've now got all our pieces drilled so we know where everything goes. Everything's all match drilled. So now what we can do is we can take all our metal pieces out. We can begin the process of adding the fasteners to the back uh, on the top, which is the screws that we're going to remove, uh, getting these set up here for the blind, fa the uh, lock nuts on the bottom. Uh, we'll do that all the way around, uh, get everything set up to go, and then we'll come back and finally uh, take a break, have some lunch, and we'll actually do the cuts after we check our lines one more time. So stand by for more fun. Okay, we have all the metal pieces drilled. We've checked all of our cut lines where we want to put them. We had to move a couple of them because they would there'd be a conflict with the fasteners. Uh, just every nose bulb sometimes works out a little bit differently. Um, and so anyway, now we're at the point where we're going to actually take the saw and get really brave and start cutting the nose bowl. Now, since the nose bowl is really stable like this, we normally cut the two center sections first because they're nice straight cuts. And uh, again, a couple of tricks is when you're cutting it, you want to keep the saw at a very low angle uh, to the material you're cutting. That way it stays nice and straight in the groove. So we're going to start down here, work our way up, do the other side on the center, and then we're going to come back and do this one. So let's make sure I'm still in the viewfinder, sort of. Okay, we're finally all the way through. I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper, knock down the sharp glass straws. So, we have now successfully split the nose bowl. Now what we have to do is put all our fasteners into our metal pieces and uh, make sure we do the right ones on the right side. So we're going to take a break here for a minute, let our hands finish uncramping. And we'll be back. Stand by. Okay, here we are having more fun. We left you off at the fact that we were our hands were cramping and we had just finished cutting the nose bowl. Now what we've done is we've applied the two center pieces back to the airplane. We've cleaked them back into place to make sure we had them in the right orientation so that we know which ones were the bottoms. So we marked the bottoms with a big, long, fat line. And that's where we're going to come back and put the, um, the blind capture uh, uh, two-legged anchors which will, I'm sorry, on the top we will put the two-legged anchors and um, the bottom will be fixed hardware and we'll mark it on the bottom with a B and then 
that tells us that by doing that, then it stabilizes the, and then we'll come back and do all the hardware work on the two sides. And believe it or not, we're standing right now at six hours into the nose bowl split. Uh, we've turned the camera off for a lot of it, um, charged another battery, which is nice. We're also going to make a modification up here to the very top. Let me make sure that's in the viewfinder, and it is. Your top of your is held in with uh, number eight uh, nylock washer uh, nuts. What happens is, is when you go to take the upper the upper cowling off, end up dropping the hardware falls down in the nose bolt, and then you're screwed because you got to take it all back off. So what we're going to do, while we're doing all these blind anchors, we're going to go ahead and put two-legged anchors up here and connect them with number forty countersunk pop rivets. So that now when you go to take the upper cowling off, it'll just be a matter of taking four screws out. So we're going to do that since we're using a bunch of these anyway today. Okay, now we've turned our attention to the metal pieces. And what we've done is, is we've figured out for this center piece, which side is the bottom, which side is the top, and we've marked it top and bottom. Through both the top and the bottom holes, we've taken a number 19 drill bit, and we've drilled a hole through each of the places where a screw is going to have to go through a number 19 hole is the size that a number 8 fastener will go through with very little clearance. We want a nice snug fit. Now on the top we've done one thing differently. We've put a two leg anchor in here and we've held it in place and we've drilled the number 40 holes for the two legged anchor and on the back side we've countersunk it. Now it's on the back side that we want to do the countersink because the, the blind fastener is going to be in here so that the screw comes all the way through and so we want to make sure that it's countersunk properly. So we'll take a couple of the number 40 skin rivets. They're nice and flush. So now this completes all the work we have to do for this. So now we're ready to come back with our number 19 drill and drill the holes in the uh, upper nose bowl. into the blind fastener. This is a really convenient mod to have on your airplane. You don't have to pull the prop and the spinner to get to the alternate and everything. It makes just it just makes it really easy. Okay. That is one of the four plates of the split nose ball all done. The next one we're going to work on. So we hope you're having as much fun as we are. So we'll be working on that one next. And then again, that will stabilize the center. And then we'll come and do the two ends. And that will be the end of the split nose ball. We'll actually come back after we're all done. Take some close matching red paint and some Q-tips and paint the little chips and nicks that are in here to kind of dress it up a little bit and put it all back together. But as you can see on this side, from our pre-existing fit by drilling all the holes before we started that's one thirty-second of an inch cut and it lines up perfectly flat here perfectly flat here so it'll be in the same orientation on the airplane not changing any of the geometry of anything so again we hope you find this very useful it's nice to see this first time we did it we did it blind and figured out what we were doing over the years we've learned a lot of tricks well, here we are at seven and a half hours, and now we've done the other center strip. These are the fixed fasteners. These are the ones we take out. So that's two out of the four, and uh, we're quite happy with that. Now we have these two to do, and uh, that will wrap it all up. And these are the hard two because it's kind of hard to do some of the drilling on the curved metal pieces. But we'll be back in a minute after we have one of these installed, and then we'll show you the, the final one we're done. And that will take care of a split nose bowl. So stay tuned. So here we are fitting the pilot side. And again, a cautionary note is you want to make sure you put these in and make sure all the Clecos go in. Now, the curved ones are easier 
because it's obviously which way the curve goes. We have one hole drilled on this side, two holes drilled over here, and it's easy to make a mistake in the final stages. So that's just my cautionary note. Now we're going to go prepare this one, put it in and show you that, and then we'll be over to the other side to finish up the last one. So stand by. We're in the home stretch. Okay, there's the left hand outside piece all done. So that's the third of the brackets all done. All we have left is the last one with eight fasteners. Not bad for eight hours worth of work. By the time we finish doing the final sanding and touch up, we'll be right at nine hours on this uh, split nose bowl. So really not a bad job at all. And um, again, we'll show you when we're all done and uh, we'll be back in just a few. Stand by. Well, here you go, ladies and gentlemen. One split nose bowl all put back together. We've already tried fitted it on the airplane. It looks fine. And now we've reached the bonus part of our program hour. Uh, up here at the very top, we are adding blind fasteners to the bottom of the um, upper cowling, where upper nose bowl, where it meets with the upper cowling. And these blind fasteners, which are the same ones we used in the split nose bowl, allow us to be able to not drop hardware down in our nose bowl. So let me just put my pneumatic riveter right here. Get it all lined up. Pull the trigger. And voila, we have one blind fastener. And by having the screw in there, in these holes, we know it's going to be in exactly the right spot for the screws to match up and mate. So we're going to do three more. We'll show you that when we're done. But we are rapidly finishing this split nose bowl project. Stand by for the finish. Okay, so here's how we do uh, the blind fasteners. We uh, use a screw to hold it in place. Then we drill from the back side to drill the first hole, put a pop rivet in. Now we're ready to take our number 41 drill, and because drills tend to wallow through fiberglass, that makes a perfect number 40 hole. We take a number 40 countersunk rivet, we put it in the hole, and these are sheer countersinks, very, very little flange, nothing that's going to interfere with the upper or lower cowling mate. Come back with the pneumatic riveter, because our hands are cramping bad enough today. Throws out the tail. Now we can take the screw out. We're down two more fasteners, we'll do the bottom one. And we're mounting these at a 45 degree angle. That way we catch across the grain of both layups of cloth. Also keeps them out of the way of, of the, the way the cow makes. Well, here you go, ladies and gentlemen, one split nose bowl. Nice straight seam lines all the way around. Right here. And the bonus is we have these blind captures up in the upper, upper nose bowl to meet with the upper cowling. Slides in, screws in. Now you won't be dropping the nuts down in the nose bowl and starting all over again. Have your mechanic watch it, help him and save some money and get a nice quality product and a nice benefit to your airplane. This is one of the most useful STCs we have available. So again, we'd like to thank you for watching and um, thanks for your support and hope you found this very useful and informative and have a good day flying your Grumman.